At the end of the previous video, I mentioned adding a second set of door lock rods and hardware to the kit, using the molded on parts as a guide. The two lock rods, as provided on Mobius's kit, are quite correct for many highway trailers, as seen in this picture of a 1 to 1 scale version. Trailers with four lock rods tend to be ones used in heavier duty service. Intermodal use, being carried on railroad cars, definitely qualifies as severe service. Although I don't have a picture of the door area of the particular trailer I'm modeling, being used in intermodal service by Conrail makes it highly plausible that trailer would have been fitted with four door lock rods. Here's another variation. Sometimes, a second lock rod will be fitted on the left side door only, because this is the one that closes over top of the right side door and helps keep everything closed. Most of the materials used are styrene rod and strip from the Evergreen selection. K&S aluminum tube in 332 diameter is fairly easy to find. The one item that might be a little more difficult to locate is the 1 64th by 1 16th brass strip. A substitution can be made by cutting 1 16th wide strips from 016 sheet aluminum. The first step is to draw pencil guidelines on the door using the molded in hardware as a guide for location. Long horizontal line marks the center of the lock rod and the four shorter vertical lines are the location of the mounting hardware. 332 diameter aluminum tube will be used to replicate these fittings that the lock rod pivots in. Measure the length with a vernier caliper, then use the caliper's depth gauge end as a cutting guide. Laying a hobby knife on the aluminum tube and rolling it lightly across the workbench surface results in a clean cut and is one of the reasons why I prefer aluminum tube for this application instead of brass. The next step is the other reason I prefer aluminum tube for this. Clamp the short piece of tube into a pair of tweezers and file away material to open up one side of the tube. There is an element of trial and error to this, but the goal is to file away about a quarter of the tube's diameter to wind up with a C-shaped piece, which can be slid onto the 1 16th styrene rod before it's glued to the door. The lock rod is glued down first, then the pieces of tube are moved to their respective locations. This closer view shows the location of the ends of each tube in relation to the layout lines. Cut pieces of 015 by 60,000 styrene strip to the same length as the tubes, round the outside corners and glue them in place. This combination of aluminum tube and styrene strip replicates the fitting that the real lock rod would pivot in. The next step is to install 20,000 styrene rivet heads to match the location of the rivet heads on the kit parts. These rivet heads are molded to a mounting post, but I find it easier to cut them off the mounting post and install them individually using a small amount of liquid cement. With the four sets of mounting hardware for the lock rod completed, the next step is the clamping mechanism at the bottom of the door. Two more pieces of 3 seconds tube cut to lengths to match the kit parts and filed to the C-shape are glued in place. Make the small triangular pieces on the door by filing a taper on the end of the piece of 20 thou by 60 thou styrene strip, cutting a section off and gluing in place. The most difficult part to make on this whole project were the small C-shaped pieces on the door frame. I made these by drilling an 032 diameter hole in a scrap piece of 10 thou styrene sheet and then cutting away material using the molded on kit part as a guide. Once those parts are glued in place, the last thing to replicate is the door handle. This starts with a piece of 10 thou by 40 thou styrene strip cut a quarter of an inch long and glued in place to act as a spacer. Make the door handle from 1 64th by 1 16th brass strip using the kit door handle as a pattern. Glue this on top of the 10 thou by 40 thou styrene spacer. Tab attaching the handle to the lock rod is made from 20 thou by 80 thou styrene strip and the pivot point is replicated with a short piece of 30 thou styrene rod glued in place in the center of the tab. 
Fittings to secure the door handle in the closed position are made from 15 thou by 60 thou styrene strip, 20 thou styrene rivet heads, and a short piece of 60 thou styrene half round glued onto the door handle. The end result is a second set of lock rods that are a reasonably close match to the molded on kit parts. With a light coat of grey primer, the modified door is much more convincing and here we can also see it compared to a stock kit part on the left. With the door assembly glued in place and the roof permanently attached, there is one more small step to finish at the back of the trailer. Lock rods on real trailers clamp the doors in place at top and bottom. On the Mobius kit, the clamps are represented at the bottom of the doors, but not at the top. A closer view of one of the trailers pictured earlier shows how the door lock rods continue above the top edge of the door. This is easy to represent in a somewhat simplified form in the model trailer. By using 80 thou diameter styrene rod, finding one side flat to create a D shape and gluing in place at the top of each lock rod. Although simplified, the visual effect of fittings in place above the edge of the door opening is effective enough in model form. Although here we've added lock rods to an existing trailer, this approach works equally well if you're building doors from scratch. Thanks for watching this installment. Next up, we'll move to the other end of the trailer and shorten it to 48 feet and add tapered corners.